The law of cosines. The law of cosines is for the remaining two cases that we have. Side angle side, which is two sides and the angle formed by the sides, and side side side. So the law of cosines, there's three formulas. The first one is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 bc cosine of a. And the other two formulas are, are similar. You use the formula that you have the information for and what you're solving for. So for example, let's look at the side angle side case. OK, so say that we have a equals 2, b equals 3, and c equals 70. OK, so if you draw a little quick triangle just to kind of as a guide, we need side, angle A, we have side A. We need angle B, we have side B. Um, and we need both, oh no, we have angle C, excuse me. We need side C. Okay, notice we do not have in a complete set of information, and I do not know why that just disappeared. Um, <laughs> so to use the law of signs, you have to have a complete set of information, all the A information, all the B, or all the C. Now, you're going to, in this case, start off with the formula for the side opposite of the given angle. So c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. OK, so plug in your numbers. So 2 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 cosine of 70. Now we want c, so we're going to take the square root of both sides. Square root of c, I mean c equals the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared is 13 minus, and this is going to be 12 cosine of 70. OK, now put that into your calculator and you get about 2.98. Now, at this point, we now have the information that we need to find the other two angles. And some books tell you you need to find the angle opposite of the shorter side. So we're going to try to find angle A. And we're going to switch over to the law of sines. We usually don't use the law of cosines more than once in a problem, mainly because we don't want to deal with radicals. So. Sine of A over A equals, and now we have the complete information for C, so we're going to use that, sine of C over C. So A is going to be the inverse sine of, <clears throat> excuse me, A sine of C over C. And so that's going to be the inverse sine of 2 sine of 70 over 2.98. And that's going to come out to be approximately 39.1. Now, B is going to be much easier. You take 180 minus 70 minus the 39.1 degrees, and we get 70.9. And we are done with this problem. Now, let's look at the last case, which is side, side, side. So what if we had A equal 3, B equal 6, and C equal 4? Now, most books will tell you that you need to find the angle opposite of the largest side. So that means that we're going to use the b squared formula since that's the largest side. So b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of angle b. And we're going to solve for cosine of b at first. So this is going to be 6 squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 cosine of b. OK. So this becomes 36 equals 25 minus 24 cosine of B. And subtract 25, you get 11 equals negative 24 cosine of B. So cosine of B 
is going to be negative 11 over 24 and b will be the inverse cosine of 11, negative 11 over 24 and that will give you approximately 117.3 degrees. Now that's one angle so now we have complete set information for the b's okay so I'm going to now go to sine of a over a and I'm only doing a because it's alphabetical it does not matter and sine of b over b okay so a is going to be the inverse sine of little a sine of angle b over little b being very careful when you type all this in once again sine inverse of 3 sine of 117.3 degrees over side b is 6 and you get a is approximately 26.4 degrees and then finally angle c is 180 minus 117.3 degrees minus to 26.4 degrees and you get 36.3 degrees okay now let's look at a problem real fast say we have a 300 foot tower is on a hill with four degrees slope so that means that angle right there is four degrees okay and this is 300 okay we want to find the length of the two guy wires that extend from the top of the tower to the ground okay whoops and each of these are a hundred feet away from the tower so this gives us basically two triangles I do not know where that disappeared for okay so our first triangle we'll do the downhill one this is 300 this is 100 that's supposed to be a straight line that we're trying to find so we'll call that x1 and this angle is going to be 90 plus 4 degrees because it's going downhill you would add so 94 degrees so x1 squared is going to be 100 squared plus 300 squared minus 2 times 100 times 300 cosine of 94 degrees and so x1 is going to be the square root of all of that and you put this into your calculator and you will get approximately 322.8 feet okay now the other triangle is going uphill so this is 300 and this is 100 but this time our angle is 86 degrees and we'll call this x2 and you're going to have very similar thing going on so you're going to have 100 squared plus 300 squared minus 2 times 100 times 300 cosine of 86 degrees that's the only thing that changes in this problem now when you oops sorry take the square root of that and you're going to get if i can get this written out real fast oops I forgot my uh, 300 there so I'll just change that to 300 cosine of 86 degrees okay um, you will get 309.5 feet the end